Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about PCOS or otherwise known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you've had a diagnosis of PCOS it can be really scary. You can really wonder what on earth this condition is and what this means for you and your general health and also your fertility. So I'm hoping that I can give you some little bit of reassurance about PCOS, um, particularly what it means but most importantly, what you can do about it and how you can help improve your PCOS. So PCOS is a really complex condition and actually it can be very difficult to diagnose. It can take on average 13 years in which to, for a woman to get a diagnosis. And part of the reason being is that PCOS can develop in your teens and 20s. And given the fact that many women are on the pill during that time to avoid pregnancy, um, that it kind of masks the symptoms. So you don't know you've got PCOS until you stop taking the pill and then wonder why everything isn't quite as it should be. So PCOS can present in the fact that you may notice that you've got either the very, very long cycles or you don't have any cycles at all. And that might not be what you remember from prior to going onto the pill. So it can be a little bit worrying when that first happens, especially because you've generally stopped the pill because you want to start conceiving. So you want to be having regular cycles to help you conceive. Also, you can have symptoms that are associated with PCOS. So the symptoms can be that many, many women, but not all, can carry some extra weight, but some women with PCOS can still be very slim. You might notice that you have uh, excess bodily hair where a woman wouldn't normally get it. So you might have some facial hair, um, some, face, some hair on your tummy, um, legs, that kind of thing. But you also might notice some thinning of hair on the scalp. Uh, you might be losing hair, um, but you also might have some acne. Now, not every woman with PCOS will have all of this range of symptoms, but you might have one or two. Um, also, you are di diagnosed based on your symptoms, based on your problems with your cycle, but also based on blood test results. So women with PCOS tend to have raised testosterone levels, which is the, generally the male hormone. So you might have raised testosterone levels. Um, and a few other um, levels can be slightly raised or out of where they should be as well. So if you're concerned that you might have PCOS, and it's definitely worth seeing your GP and getting some blood tests done to see whether you do. Another symptom of PCOS is that you may have cysts on the ovaries. And you kind of get like almost like little pearls that are around the ovaries and they stop a mature follicle actually being released from the egg at the time of ovulation. So that's why with PCOS you may not be ovulating. But it's a very complex condition. The hormones are really impacted and they're impacted based on something called insulin resistance, which is where you have elevated insulin levels because your glucose levels are all out of kilter. Now this PCOS in itself is a very, very long topic. And again, if there's enough of you that would like to hear a webinar on that, then that might be something that we can do in the future. So most importantly then, what can you do about PCOS? Well, interestingly, the number one factor for controlling PCOS is making healthy choices and changes to your lifestyle. So that is something that is completely under your control. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. Before I do, there are other factors that you can also consider and can see your GP about. And those are things like certain medication that you can take to help with your PCOS. And one of those medications is called metformin, um, which helps with your insulin resistance, your blood sugar levels. But there's also, um, to help you ovulate, you can take Clomid. Again, this needs to be prescribed by your doctor or your specialist, and that can help you then ovulate. It's called ovulation induction medication. And if you've got any questions about that, do see your doctor to, to talk through the types of medication that are um, available to you. So let's think about the things then that you can do to really help make a difference to your PCOS. It's absolutely possible to control your PCOS. So the most important factor is nutrition. Women who have PCOS have these raised um, levels of insulin and glucose. So you need to get in control of that. And the best way to do that is to reduce your carbohydrate, your refined carbohydrate intake and your sugar. So importantly, you'd be wanting to have a low carb, low sugar diet, a little bit like a diabetic diet because PCOS and diabetes are very, very similar. 
So you need to eliminate refined carbs from your diet as much as possible and resist those refined sugar cravings, which is really, really common with women with PCOS, particularly that 3 p.m., 4 p.m. slump when you just want to have some sugar. Consider what supplements you might need. Now, that, like I said, when we've talked about how you can optimize your fertility in a previous video, um, supplements are individual for every woman, but you may benefit from taking a supplement called inositol. And inositol helps with this insulin resistance and it just puts everything back down to normal so that your hormones start to come to normal. It helps with uh, regulating a cycle and promoting ovulation. And it also helps with all the symptoms of PCOS. So excess bodily hair, the um, acne, et cetera, et cetera. And also helps you to, um, to hopefully lose weight also helps with mood and sleep and all the other things that can be affected with PCOS. If you have any questions on inositol or are looking for, to find out recommendation for the best inositol that you can purchase, please feel free to email me on kate at yourfertilityjourney.com because I can advise you on the best inositol um, for you to take for you. Next thing is get your trainers on, get exercising. Women who've got PCOS can often feel quite lethargic and that's part of your PCOS diagnosis. So you kind of feel reluctant to get off the sofa and get exercising. But if you can, it really helps with your insulin resistance. Um, important to kind of consider um, exercising, so doing some cardiovascular exercise, doing some muscle strengthening exercise, and maybe some relaxation type of exercise like walking in nature, um, a bit of yoga. That combination really, really helps to improve your PCOS. Many women who have PCOS can often feel quite stressed. Again, it kind of goes hand in hand with PCOS. So trying to look at how you can reduce stress would be really important. So find ways in which you can help yourself to cope with stress and kind of take that, that control a little bit. Stop smoking. That uh, smoking, as I talked about in a previous video, really damages, damages your ovaries and it can, can actually increase your PCOS symptoms. So definitely worth working on that. If you are carrying any extra weight, then consider losing weight. This will help regulate your insulin resistance and help regulate your cycles and induce ovulation. I know it's not easy to lose weight and it's certainly not easy to lose weight with um, PCOS, but it can be done. It just takes a huge amount of motivation. Many women with PCOS, as I mentioned, suffer with um, acne. So start a really good regular skincare regime that will really help to improve your skin um, and will limit your kind of breakouts. Reduce your alcohol down. Alcohol is full of sugar, and I think we often forget that. That glass of wine, full of sugar. Um, so again, reduce that alcohol. That will help regulate your insulin levels. Make time for you. Really important to do that, to you know, give yourself a little bit of self-care. Um, a lot of women with PCOS feel um, quite anxious, can really lack self-esteem. So nurture yourself. Give yourself that time to... Do the things that you enjoy, look after yourself a little bit, whether it be maybe considering some reflexology, some acupuncture, which will help with your PCOS or starting meditation or um, going to a Zumba class with a friend because that's something that you enjoy. So pick out some things that you enjoy and make that time for you, that you time and that self-care time. Get confident and take back control. PCOS has, is such a complex condition that it affects you in so many different ways as I mentioned it affects self-esteem so by losing a little bit of weight by eating healthily by exercising you're naturally going to start feeling better about yourself so get your confidence back take back control another important aspect we talked about earlier is is learning to uh, track your cycles so that you know when you're ovulating. Majority of women with PCOS will ovulate, but just not every cycle. So it's important for you to really understand how you can go about that. Now, I've given you a lot of information in a really, really short time, and there is so much more that I can tell you about PCOS. It's one of my specialties and something I really enjoy helping women with, mainly because you see results so, so quickly. But you might be interested in having a look at my PCOS journal. I've just bought out a PCOS journal and it's all my tips and advice in a beautiful 
journal which is either comes in a beautiful grey, a pink or a teal which teal is the colour of PCOS Awareness Month which is in September so I've chosen that kind of particularly for that as well um, but this journal gives you loads and loads of information it's got time for you to uh, write down your thoughts and your feelings track your cycle gives you information on nutrition on weight loss on tracking your cycle loads of stuff and information there so check it out on my website which is www.yourfertilityjourney.com and head directly to the shop and that will give you all the information you need also on my website there is so so much information on PCOS on the blogs and the articles that I've written so feel free to take a lot a look because there is so much information there for you but if you've got any questions that are specific to you feel free to get in contact with me and you can get in contact uh, on um, kate at yourfertilityjourney.com or you can get in contact with me on instagram at yourfertilityjourney i hope that's helped today and uh look forward to hearing from you bye for now